Hello, Santa Fe. I'm Carlene with Living Santa Fe through Kitchen Angels. Uh, these are these shows with Kitchen Angels. Doreen and I have been doing these for years. I I volunteered here for quite a while. I was uh, turned out to be the cleaner in the kitchen all the time because that was the only place I could go that nobody told me what to do. <laughs> My guest is Dwayne Trujillo, and let's see, Dwayne, you are a development officer. Yes, I'm the development officer here at Kitchen Angels, and I've been here for about, coming up on two years. Two years? Yeah, it's wonderful. What's your job? I really enjoy it here. Um, I'm in development, so I do a lot of the fundraising, uh, marketing, and social media, and I manage whatever fundraising benefits that we host. Mm -hmm. I also work with our donors and, uh, you know, stewardship and gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your impression of Kitchen Angels? You've been here for two years. Tell me, what, what have you learned? And you know, I, I've always had an interest in uh, food service and food justice. So when I saw that Kitchen Angels <clears throat> existed in Santa Fe, that there was an organization like this that helped <clears throat> those in need, people who are homebound. Uh, food is such a necessity, you know, everyone needs. Food is not a luxury and I wanted to work with an organization that is going to help you know those people who are homebound and can uh, fill the refrigerators on their own when there's so much uh, food and wealth in Santa Fe. That's right. Uh, back in 19, I think it was 1992, uh, this project came out of, out of a, a crisis. It was the uh, AIDS crisis. Yes. And it's kind of ironic that today here we are in a pandemic crisis. This is quite a bit of time since then. And uh, had a great community response from, from citizens of Santa Fe. Um, I don't know how many clients you have now, but when I was working here, they had quite a few clients. And, uh, and these people come over here, pick up the food, and it's hot, very nice plate to people that are homebound. How many do you have now? Yes. Currently, we are now serving 191 clients. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that was when you were here, but... Not that many, but it was a lot. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. It's 191 clients a day, mm -hmm. and that's probably the max. This is probably the highest that we've ever... Uh, the highest number that we've served so far. Now, COVID 19's been around since, uh, well, when we first heard about it. It goes way back to uh, March. We knew about it in November and December, but, you know, we really started taking action at that time. Um, how did it affect here? How did it affect Kitchen Angels? What did you do when you first heard you're going to have a lockdown? Oh, you know, it, it affected Kitchen Angels tremendously. You know, we're very concerned about the clients, and that's our first priority, the clients and the staff and our volunteers. Uh, so we made a, a tremendous amount of operational changes throughout the facility. Uh, we closed the facility to the public, so nobody is allowed into Kitchen Angels unless it's the staff and the kitchen volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and now, uh, we also abide by all the rules. We uh, provide face masks and hand sanitizers to all the staff and to the volunteers. Uh, we were so generous with the city. Um, volunteers and just the general public made all these homemade face masks for Kitchen Angels that they donated to us, which was you know, so generous and so thoughtful of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone is required to wear face masks throughout the building. Uh, we also provide hand sanitizers throughout the building and we gave individual hand sanitizer bottles to all of the volunteers and the delivery drivers. Mm -hmm. And we are maintaining our social distancing at six feet apart. Um, in the kitchen, we had to rearrange uh, the volunteer shifts so that they are, there are no more than eight volunteers at a time in the kitchen and they each work at their own table and the tables are six feet apart. I see. So those kind of operational changes have, have seemed to work out now. Now that kitchen has been completely remodeled since I was here. Yes, when was that? Oh was my that? god, I don't know. <clears throat> Before my legs went goofy on me. <laughs> um, but at the time Teresa was here. Okay. And now you have a new cook. We have a new chef. A new uh, chef. His, his name is Chef Joe Cates, Joe. Who, whom we love. And the mm -hmm. food I, I think has been its best it's ever been. 
I understand he's done a fantastic job. Yes. How many workers do you have, volunteers? Uh, well, we're only five on staff, and as far as volunteers, we used to have about um, 40 volunteers mm -hmm. here a week, but now with the operational changes, and we only allow, like I said, um, eight volunteers at a time in the kitchen. Yeah. So that's eight volunteers in the morning in the kitchen shift, and then eight volunteers in the afternoon. So we, we're trying to minimize the amount of uh, public entrance into the building. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned your masks. I understand you had a contest. Uh, yes, you know, it was like, like I said, we had so many face masks donated to Kitchen Angels, all kinds of creative and artsy and some a little more um, uh, serious in types. But, you know, we received hundreds of face masks yeah. that are all made from just fabric that people had in their homes. Uh -huh. and, and the volunteer or the people that donate the food, uh, I know you, you get great, a lot of money coming in from community. Well, we buy the food. And then you buy the food. Yes. But uh, uh, what, what agencies do you recognize for the food? I mean, I'm sure there are certain ones that, that help you out. Sure. We purchase food from, you know, uh, we try to buy local from our mm -hmm. local food purveyors. Some of those are just the best. And Shamrock Foods. Those we purchase, but we also do get some wonderful donations from local farmers. You know, when now mm -hmm. it's peak season as produce is starting to grow, so we'll get, you know, just the local farmers will just show up with, you know, truckloads of apples or vegetables, whatever the mm -hmm. produce or fruit may be in that, uh, maybe in season at that particular moment. Yeah. You also had a contest on, I know everybody touches doors and light switches. And, mm -hmm. You know, we're just so used to doing everything we don't all feel like doing. Now, you had a contest, you, you came up with some ideas from people how to get through doors without yes. touching them. It is difficult because we're a tactile society, right? Mm -hmm. So in the kitchen, uh, we have swinging doors, swinging doors, so we had to train the kitchen volunteers. That you kick with your hip. Well, that's one way to go. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of uh, using their hands to push the doors open, they had to use their elbows to mm -hmm. just slide the door open. And we had a contest. Uh, uh, with the different uh, kitchen volunteer shifts, and it was, I don't remember exactly which shift, but uh, there were not any smear marks on the door, any fingerprints, <laughs> so we gave that particular shift, uh, I think it was a tray of uh, chocolates. Oh, you could, they got the chocolates. Speaking of that, I understand you have uh, uh, Maggie's Cupcakes? Yes, uh, she's wonderful. Um, we. The clients, when it's their birthdays, we give them a special cupcake on their birthday, mm -hmm. and Maggie's Cupcakes is generous enough to donate those cupcakes to us. Oh, I see. And you have candy groups that donate sweets? Uh, well, we have a baker. We have a volunteer baker who comes in. Uh, well, now the shifts are a little bit different, but we do have a, a regular volunteer baker who comes in and bakes sweets for the volunteers, and uh, he does it on his own time. He's retired from Los mm -hmm. Alamos Labs, and he just enjoys baking. Yeah, which is so generous of him. That's that's right. People are people are being pretty nice during this uh, event. Um, and also, you know, I was wanted to mention with the delivery drivers. So the yes. delivery drivers are no longer allowed to come into the building. They used to pick up the client meal bags mm -hmm. in the delivery prep room here inside Kitchen Angels, <clears throat> but now we reorganized it, and the delivery drivers come around back. They come to the back of the building and they pick up the client mail bags on the loading dock and they just line up their cars, you know, two lanes of cars and, you know, it's just easy access in the back and they don't have to enter the building. It's just Good. another precautionary measure we're taking for a less uh, public entrance into the building. Now, uh, when I was there, they had, they had the stoves on one end and they had some food in the back, back storage room and then they had the area over there where they packaged them and, and people would come in and pick everything up. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty well organized. But now I understand that, that you have some new stoves, you have a dishwasher. Yes, we have. I would have been thrown out. <laughs> I mean, you'd have had to fire me because that's what I did. Oh, you enjoyed doing the dishes? I did it because then nobody could tell me what to do. <laughs> nobody wants to touch the dishwasher. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, we've eliminated, I guess, that position with the dishwasher, and it washes these wonderful uh, restaurant trays 
I, you know, it's something like a dozen trays in, in mm -hmm. 60 or 90 seconds. Right. It's quite efficient. Yes, and then in the delivery room, you, you still package in there, but you they can pick them up outside. Yes, in the delivery prep room, and they prep the meals, and then they take the meal bags out to the loading dock, and that's where the delivery drivers just drive up and pick up the bags. What a great idea. Yeah, we also designated a specific volunteer to wash and sanitize the thermal bags because those thermal bags that we use to deliver the client meals, you know, we recycle them. Sure. The delivery driver brings them back the next week. So we uh, thought it was smart to assign just one volunteer to wash and clean those uh, daily. Now, uh, the lady that serves as president here, her name is Linda Dressman, she's the president. Yes. Who else do you have on your staff? So Linda Dressman is our board president and she's wonderful, she always has fantastic ideas and always willing to roll her sleeves up and jump in. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony McCarty is our executive director. Been here for years. And he is the executive director and leader and has been here for about 26 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a fantastic leader and we've all learned so much from him. And he's the one that came up with these ideas and the uh, institutional reorganizational changes to um, accommodate and work around and work through the pandemic. And we're proud to say that we have not skipped any meals and we've served, uh, we deliver meals five days a week and we continue to do so and uh, we haven't skipped a beat. That's wonderful. Uh, now you have a, you, of course you mentioned the food service uh, person, Joe Cates, and then uh, you have uh, Jeanette Iscott. Yes, she's our she's client. Client service. Yes. And uh, Lauren Laval. Lauren Laval, and she's a community liaison, and she works with the volunteers and recruits them and uh, manages them. Mm -hmm. Now you send out a bulletin. I think Doreen has a copy of it over there uh, to people that have donated. Um, like, for instance, now the Angels' Night Out, that has been canceled. Yes. What are you doing to keep it going? So Angels' Night Out had to be canceled because, you know, the restaurants were closed mm -hmm. and just, you know, it's not realistic. But what we are going to do, and please, we canceled it for the year. We thought about maybe rescheduling it for later in the fall, but we just came to the decision that that wasn't going to work out. But we are hosting a fundraiser in August, and that is called Feasting with Friends. Okay. So we did that last year, which was uh, quite successful. It's where we, uh, it'll be the whole month of August, and we ask people to host a dinner party in their home, invite their friends and family, and they'll collect donations for Kitchen oh, Angels. great idea. And it, you know, kind of works out in this environment that people aren't quite, may not be ready to go to restaurants, and. Uh, it's safe to have a few people over in your home for small dinner parties. And, and then, uh, then they donate and then the person hosting yeah, the party gives you the money. The host covers the cost of the meal and you know they're gonna, it could be a, a breakfast or brunch or a fancy dinner or maybe just drinks and appetizers and they'll collect donations from their guests and uh, for Kitchen Angels. So it worked out well last year. We're looking forward to um, more parties and so we're looking for a host this year so please Look at, uh, please visit kitchenangels.org for more information. Okay, now when is that night? I mean, when are you going to do this? Do you have an idea of what date? Yes, it's going to be the whole month of August. So August. people that provide a little bit of um, leeway and availability to, for people to pick a date, what works for them. So okay. any time in the month of August. Good. Well, maybe I'll get energy, energetic and invite a bunch of my friends over and we'll have a wine party or something. Yeah, it, it could be as, I'll as casual. Turn it upside down and shake it. <laughs> it could be as casual or as decadent and elegant as you want. You uh -huh. know, whatever is comfortable for you. That's a wonderful idea. Okay, uh, now you send mail outs to people and I know I always send my donation in mm -hmm. to the mail outs. Yes. The other way you do is this Kitchenality. What a great idea that is. Well, thank you. Yes, Kitchenality is our resale retail store where we sell gently used kitchenware. And it's wonderful because everything that's donated, everything that we sell in Kitchenality is donated and 100% of the proceeds come back into the program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to be open uh, six days a week and it was you know, a wonderful store and wonderful profits for Kitchen Angels, but now we've had to close that. Uh, but we are going to reopen it, and it's going to be sometime in July. Okay. Uh, please visit kitchenangels.org for details. But uh, we're looking into 
how that's going to look with um, only a few people in, in the store at a time. Uh, we did buy a shield guard for the cash register, mm -hmm. which uh, maybe we'll have some pictures of that to show. So we're trying to still figure out what the details and what that's going to look like. Well, i got to tell you, I've had a lot of people come into Santa Fe to see me. First place I bring them is to Kitchenality. They love it. And they've come back and they want to go to Kitchenality and they buy stuff. I mean, you know, I'm trying to get rid of stuff. Right. But, and my friends are too, but they go to Kitchenality, they always buy something. Because they have some nice stuff nice nice kitchenware in there sure you know there's that we carry everything in there from pots and pans flatware stemware uh flatware some really nice there's everything from just everyday casual dishes mm -hmm. to very fine elegant An china antique china, china. antique china mm -hmm. yes we do have a lot of those as well well my friends tell me their kids don't want any of their beautiful stuff they yeah. want to go to uh the dollar store and get the plasticware and that's what they're eating off of where when I was a little kid, if my mother had to set a table, it was with beautiful things, you know, and we've kind of lost that. But kitchenality, bring it back. Oh, sure, you know, and it provides the, the, the option if you want to have a nice, fancy dinner party, you could have separate dishes for those, or oh, yeah. you just, you know, everyday, everyday dishes and flatware that you need in the kitchen, you know? And I'm glad all that money's going back into Oh, sure, 100% of the proceeds come back into the program. That's, that's so we're looking cool. forward to, uh, opening, reopening in July. Now, if somebody wants to donate to Kitchenality, what do they do? We are accepting, we are currently accepting donations for Kitchenality, mm -hmm. just uh, we have a, what we call a pot on the side of the building that's housing the, uh, the dishes in the meanwhile or, or all the kitchen goods. Mm -hmm. uh, just call Kitchen Angels and we'll arrange to, for a pickup okay. and exchange. Okay. So no one comes into the building, it's, you know, on the side of the building. Do you still have all those cookbooks? We have a lot of cookbooks, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up. We're, we're looking to do some sort of an art feature design element with the cookbooks, the cookbook. made of the cookbooks. So I hope you will um, come visit us and, and see it when it's uh, completed. Absolutely. Be great. Uh, now, your office staff, um, if anybody needs to help somebody, let's just say they have a relative that's homebound, uh, should they call the office, talk to the administrator in there? Sure. How do you go about doing that? Oh, sure. Just uh, You'll see the number on our website uh, at kitchenangels.org, and uh, you can talk to Jeanette Iscat. She's the client services manager, and she'll, um, she'll see what she can do to see if your uh, recommendation fits our requirements to get on service. Um, so you've got your new delivery protocols. Yes. Basically you've talked about that. Uh -huh. uh, your frontline responders. Yes. Yeah, so you know, also I, I wanted to mention the delivery drivers were, as we call it, the olden days. They used to um, visit with the client, say hi to them, spend a few minutes, because you know, that kind of friendship mm -hmm. is important with people who are isolated and who are homebound. But now under these new circumstances, the delivery drivers only, uh, they'll knock on the door, and they wait for a verbal acknowledgement, and they leave the client mail bag on the front doorstep, oh, and then they'll leave. So there isn't any no, exchange no. or any uh, facial interaction mm -hmm. or just any kind of those pleasant changing, exchanging pleasantries. Okay, and they also have to maintain physical distance. Yes, they maintain the six feet social distancing, and like I said, they just drop the client meal bag on the front store, on the doorstep, and they and they leave it there for the client. Now, on the mask, they had the sewing brigade. Yes. Who, how, how many women volunteered to do that? And how many men, I should say, not just women, Right. Men I, too. I think it was all women. Um, it was about, I'd say a good 12 or 13 different female volunteers that donated a variety of facial masks. Mm -hmm. You know, and continually, it wasn't just a one-time thing. They would call us and ask us if they needed more face masks, which was so thoughtful and generous. And uh, they, some of them keep donating and dropping face masks off, dropping face masks off weekly. Oh, that's good. Yeah. For, for the clients. And oh, sure. Because, sure. you know, we want to make sure everyone who is inside the building has the proper face mask. This whole building is being redone. It's quite nice, and it's spotless in here. Well, thank you. You know, uh, cleanliness is very important to us, and, and the, the kitchen is just as clean just as all of our offices are. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what about takeout with the businesses? Somebody said you're working with different restaurants on takeout, like if, a, if say one of your clients wants to do takeout uh, with, I mean, if they want to go to say a Trisco's and get a bowl of chili. Mm -hmm. Well, how, we, how are you working that? We have partnered with Dashing Delivery, which they were really nice. They're a, a food delivery service, and they're local. They're locally yeah. owned, and uh, they're nice enough that every now and then they will um, do a fundraiser for Kitchen Angels, and they will donate some of their proceeds, some of their um, delivery fees, to Kitchen Angels, mm -hmm. which is so nice of them. You know, That's they they great. really care about community support and and supporting local businesses, and, and they share our mission is of Kitchen Angels, which is helping our, our homebound neighbors. Are you going to the legislature this year? I mean, I know they're having a special session, so you probably won't be involved in that, but uh, I know they used to go over to the legislature and hit them up for money. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, this might be a good year to jump in there right <laughs> away, because yes. now it's the whole different world. Yes, yeah, I, now's an opportunity, right? So yeah. I'm sure either Tony and myself or our Linda, our president, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll figure out those who's going to go and, and, and maybe yes. Stephanie Gonzalez, of course, she was president here. For sure, a yeah, she's fantastic. And, and she'd go over to the legislature and hit them up for money. And of course, yeah. she was an ex secretary of state, so they had to give it to her because she knows where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> she knows who to ask and how to ask. Yes, she does. Yeah, she's, she's very good. She is. Uh, can a can a group sponsor? Can they be sponsors? Oh, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, say that uh, uh, some business wants to sponsor. Oh, sure. Sponsor. Yeah. We, you know, we're looking, we, you, we, there's a variety of uh, sponsorship opportunities. Companies can maybe sponsor a delivery route with the drivers. Yes. They can also sponsor maybe uh, Feasting with Friends, which will happen in August. So yeah, there's definitely sponsorship opportunities. So. Uh, Please visit kitchenangels.org and we'll have some information on there. Okay, not to leave the best ones last, okay. but the pets. Yes. You have a pet <clears throat> pet angel program. <laughs> yes, we uh, we also deliver um, dog and cat food to mm -hmm. any of the clients who have uh, cats or dogs. And um, the, the company that was donating pet food to us, because they were for years, uh, they no long, They stopped donating pet food to us, so we had to, and we didn't want to stop delivering pet food to those animals because we know how important that kind of companionship is for the clients. Uh, so we started a Pet Angels Fund, and the community was so generous, they donated you know a lot of money, so now we are able to continue, still continue to deliver pet food to uh, the clients. You know, it makes a difference when you're homebound to have a little cat or a dog. Um, we're about ready to end this program, would you like to say something to our audience about participating, donating, whatever you want to say? Yes, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're accepting donations for Kitchenality, and like I said, we have a pot on the side of the building. Just give us a call and let us know when you plan to drop off uh, the donations, and we'll come and pick them up. And we're looking for a host for Feasting with Friends. If you like to entertain, if you like to host a party, or you like to have friends and family over, why not make it a fundraiser and donate, collect donations for Kitchen Angels? And all of this information and details will be on our website at uh, kitchenangels.org. Okay, kitchenangels.org, Santa Fe. And uh, uh, look into your pockets, see if you have a few bucks in there, and donate it to Kitchen Angels. This is a community thing. Um, together we're better. Yes. And yes. we've got to work with these groups, such as Kitchen Angels, that are doing the work, and they're they're helping the community, and you have a lot of help doing that. And you have a lot of friends in Santa Fe, so I know you're going to make it. Thank you. Yeah, Santa Fe has been very generous in the whole state of New Mexico to Kitchen Angels. We've been around since 1992, and I'm proud to say that we have just reached serving our uh, 1.5 million meals. Oh wow! Yeah, it's it's a new record at a height for us. That's that's one of the one of the big things here in Santa Fe that that you people do. I know. Uh, Food Depot has done a lot, yeah, and, sure. and so many of these groups. Mm -hmm. Santa Fe Community College, yes. the cooking area group out there has sure. helped out. So. Yes, the culinary program, they've been very generous with us as well. So, come on Santa Fe, chip in, 
and thank you for tuning in. And thank you, Dwayne Trujillo, and good luck on your job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you.